I would say probably the biggest misconception about sickle cell is that we're okay, that we walk around and we look we look fine on the outside and nothing's wrong, when in reality, um, we deal with a lot that most people don't see. see you know. Six fifty of Tylenol, uh, ten of Zyrtec, twenty of Exit. Some water for you. I've I've been having like lots of joint pain, um, maybe the last few weeks. So usually at the end of the the cycle of the exchange, you know, by the time we get to this four the four weeks, I'm like really ready to have the exchange to kind of get some relief and stuff. So. Okay, one, two, three, stick. Okay, so procedure has started. It's going to start collecting his blood and replacing with this back here. Okay, it doesn't like that. Let me flush it. Long slow because your line is giving us trouble. Yeah. That's why. Paul has sickle cell disease. He comes in for a routine exchange blood transfusion every few weeks. Sometimes the tube carrying Paul's blood out of his body gets blocked, and the nurse has to use a clot buster to keep the blood flowing. And, and something like that happens on the inside of a body of a sickle cell disease patient, you know. Um, most of the time, and I'm sure Paul can attest to this, most of the time uh, during a sickle cell crisis is when, you know, those cells will clump together, form, a, form an obstruction, so blood isn't flowing past that obstruction. Sickle cell disease is a genetic disorder that affects the blood. It turns blood cells from the typical donut shape into the shape of a half moon or a sickle. This makes the blood unable to carry oxygen, which could damage parts of the body and cause frequent and excruciating pain crises. Go. The, the first crisis I had had a huge impact on my life. It destroyed growth plates, so I had one of my legs was longer than the other, you know, when I was growing up. If I have a crisis or attack, that can happen at any time, you know. If I was stressed or maybe I got a cold, that could bring on a crisis, and it could be in the middle of the night, and I gotta get up, I gotta call the ambulance, go to the ER. Sickle cell is the most common genetic disorder in the U.S., but there is a lack of awareness around it, and that affects patients' care when they show up at the hospital during a pain crisis. They understand cancer pain, but they don't understand sickle cell. People decide what they want to put their research money on. How they make that decision, I don't know but there's not enough research or progress on sickle cell. Sickle cell disease affects more than 100,000 people in the U.S. And unlike most other diseases, the vast majority of patients are black. Experts say that's why it receives a fraction of the federal and charitable dollars that other less common diseases with more white patients receive. There's no question that the resources that have been brought to this disease would have been very different if, if it affected a very different population of people. Doctors in the U.S. discovered sickle cell over a century ago. But until the 70s, one in every three kids with the disease died before they turned five. For a long time, it was considered a pediatric disease. Then Congress decided to pump millions of dollars to fund research to improve outcomes for kids. And that helped slash death rates for children by more than 60%. It was very challenging, because, but we had a very good, compassionate pediatric uh, uh, physicians, you know, then that we just take it day to day and we didn't really know what we were doing, but we had a lot of support until they got to the adult stage with no transition and then they were out of the house too. Once patients grow out of pediatric care, 
things change drastically, and that comes at a cost. I had a twin brother, his name was Lewis. And um, we were identical twins. Uh, he was like my best friend, my other half. He also had sickle cell anemia, and he passed in 2004 from complications to his sickle cell anemia. You know, Lisa is you know, healthy, three months old babies, you know. Uh, we didn't have any problems. Lewis was 20 years old when he died. His health took one blow after another. A few months before he passed, he went in for a wisdom tooth extraction, but ended up in the ICU for nearly two weeks. Sickle cell patients need special care, even for routine procedures. But for many adults with sickle cell, coordinated, comprehensive care is out of reach. It was when he crashed, they told us that they were not able to get hold of the hematologist. The hematologist was out of town. Then he was back uh, in the hospital first week of December, you know, for a pain crisis. Then, you know, then this happened. And, you know, he just, he just went down. Lewis is not an anomaly. While life expectancy for kids with sickle cell in the U.S. has risen dramatically, for adults, it's actually been falling every single year in recent decades. Studies suggest the deadliest time for sickle cell patients is young adulthood. Yeah, I think with sickle cell, that's probably one of the hardest things is trans, um, transitioning from having a doctor, a pediatric doctor that knows you very well, knows a lot about you. You know, even to this day, finding doctors that are willing to you know, work together or, you know, coordinate, you know, types of stuff, it's, it's very hard. It's not something, I don't see that very often. The idea that anyone should be able to treat sickle cell disease is as ridiculous to me as anyone should be able to treat breast cancer. Lewis's death was a shock to Paul's system. Since then, he's been on top of his care and controls what he can. Uh, um, I carry my protocol and I keep it here. Uh, so as soon as I get to the ER, after they triage me, I just bring out my, um, my protocol. This so one can be, can have been used a lot, you can see, and I give it to the doctors and, you know, and I ask them to follow, you know, this guideline. Um, I also keep copies at home, so if I ever lose it or something, I can, you know, make another copy and always have it on me. So, and that's helped me a lot, you know. So when I when I go in, they understand what my treatment is and usually I don't have a lot of pushback getting what I need. So a lot of times now, anytime I feel sickness or anything, you know, I worry, is this my last time, you know? Is, will this be the last time that I see my family or my son, you know? So it's, it's, that it put a dampening on my spirit, my life a little bit, I would say, yeah, yeah.